Hi, my name is Brittany and welcome to my vlog. <laughs> Today our subject is, it's actually a hormone update with a concentration on the use of progesterone. Now, uh, for those of you who are not on progesterone, uh, there is mixed research on its effectiveness. Um, I started doing, I started, I started taking hormones, uh, it'll be two years in January, beginning of January, 2014, January 2nd, 2014, it'll be two years, so it's been like 20 months, uh, a month into my hormone regimen, whatever, so in February I started progesterone, now the concentration here is on progesterone, um, I'm sticking to the chair. Uh, as you can tell, I'm wearing uh, an exercise bra and jiggling the camera. Um, actually, most of this is actually me. Um, it's certainly not all me, but it's partially me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... My point is, is that um, progesterone is known to increase the volume of your breasts by building uh, mammary glands uh, to the point where you should be able to get double your volume in your breast tissue. Now, um, my first transition, and for those of you who are not keen on the fact that I that I did transition once, I was on hormones just like just like I am now. I was on estradiol valerate. I was grossly underdosing. Uh, I might have been doing, uh, I don't know, 10 milligrams of estradiol valeri, uh, which is shot in your butt with a needle about every, I don't know, 10 days to two weeks. I hated it because it felt like I was sitting on a marble all the time. It's hard to say what I got out of that. Uh, I really thought I got a lot of nipple sensitivity out of it to the point where I could have a freaking orgasm by just playing with my nipples. Think about that one for a minute. And boy did I do that. I had a grand time with that stuff. I mean, my nipples were on fire all the time. Um, was it from that? I don't know because, you know, that's not the case now. Uh, they are, they are very insensitive actually now. And I, the only thing that's really changed is um, what I was on, what I'm on now what, versus what I was on then. And the other thing I was on was Premarin. And I think I was on the, the purple ones. And they were, um, I don't know, I think they're 1.25 milligrams or something like that. And I used to take two a day or something. You know, something like that, three a day, I don't remember, I think two a day. But I was way underdosing. And I got jack squat out of it, I really did. Uh, this time around I'm doing the, primer, or the progesterone along with estradiol hemihydrate, which is the one you stick under your tongue and it dissolves. Those are two milligrams a piece, I do them three or four times a day and I usually alternate between three and four per day because I know that doing so gets my est estrogen uh, level in my blood to uh, a point where it's considered optimum, at least by my endocrinologist. Um, first, I don't know, 10 months or so, I was self-medicating. Uh, some of my drugs still come from overseas because they don't sell them here. <laughs> est 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 uh, estradiol hemihydrate, which is 17 beta estradiol, and that molecule allows for the estradiol to the, the pill to basically dissolve under your tongue. It, it will reduce the impact on your liver as opposed to taking estrace or estanil or one of the other uh, fun estrogen uh, hormone um, uh, uh, formularies, we'll call it. Okay. Um, Progesterone is micronized progesterone. It is AKA natural progesterone as opposed to um, hydroxy progesterone, which is synthetic progesterone. Synthetic progesterone, AKA medroxy progesterone, is something you want to stay away from at all costs because it has such a long laundry list of 
uh, side effects, none of which you're going to want. And so, if you do decide to go down the progesterone road, um, make sure it's micronized progesterone. Uh, I got more bad news for you. Micronized progesterone is not found uh, in the United States. Yeah, it might be. You might find it. You might find it. If you find it uh, and you don't have health insurance, be, pe be prepared to pay insane money for it. What does that mean? Like $4 a dose. Um, if you get it from where I get it, which is four corners, uh, overseas, um, you're looking at around 75 to 85, 90 cents a dose. Uh, those are 200 milligrams each. Uh, that is the dose that I have been taking. Um, now I said had as in past tense. Now I, I complete. I take it 15 out of every 30 days, or I have had taken it 15 out of every 30 days. Um, being that I am the age that I am come to the conclusion that it's long enough. I've been on it 19 months. One of the side effects, and I have to tell you, uh, progesterone, and you need to really understand this. I know a lot of you girls out there are, are, are less than technical, and this is to your, dis your, your detriment. Uh, it, it can hurt you because you're not technical. And if you believe that leaving your um, medical needs in the hands of your doctors is a good idea. Sounds like a good idea. Wow, you know, people who who do surgery on you or your doctors, people who fix your your plumbing or plumbers. You know, you, you know, plumbers fix plumbing, doctors fix you. Doctors don't always know jack squat slash a little bit more than maybe you do about hormones. You might find they're going back in their office and reading a book to figure out what the hell to give you. We're looking it up on Google. A lot of us, um, a lot of uh, uh, endocrinologists do not have too many um, transgender patients, and they might be winging it when it comes to uh, dosing you on hormones. Um, this is why I think some of them start with dosages that are just obscenely low. Uh, I'm taking eight milligrams of that's the bottle of estrogen a day, every other day, and then six every other day, alternate back and forth. Progesterone, which I've come to the conclusion, causes because when it is metabolized by your body, one of the breakdown components can be DHT, which is dihydroxytestosterone, <laughs> aka testosterone. Now, testosterone, even in small amounts, and I mean enormously small amounts measured in your blood, in your blood chemistry, will cause facial hair growth. And I have been finding that certain times of the month, my facial hair growth seems to be worse than other times. And I'm like, I, I just, I don't know. I think I was just being stupid, honestly. I think I was thinking it was, I was either ignoring it or I wasn't putting two and two together or whatever. And I know it doesn't look good for me, but um, I'm just here to admit to you that um, you do need to reassess what you are taking. Um, progesterone can be very good. I think that after 19 months, it's about enough. I've been on hormones for years, and I mean, probably for me, it's almost five years collectively. So, um, having spoken to a plastic surgeon, I have more than enough breast tissue and inframammary fold, which is um, cocking the camera down. I said cock. 
Okay, so hand for memory fold is underneath, okay? So, boob jiggle, okay? So, basically where the bottom of the breast goes into the chest wall, this is, um, this is the inframammary fold.